Welcome back, John Fedger here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. If you're watching this video, you wonder when can I not get approved by a mobile home park manager? Uh, and then by sort of default, when should I get approved? When do I have to get approved by a mobile home park manager? If you're going through any specific situations, feel free to email me directly at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net for specific questions. This video should hopefully cover many of the situations out there. But again, if you have something specific, you can always reach out to me. Um, thank you for watching what I have right behind me uh, is my whiteboard, but you can see that on the whiteboard it says for non-investors. This channel is mainly for real estate investors, but there I'm sure there's going to be a handful of non-investors watching this, you know, wondering do I have to get approved or not. So I want to cover, you know, you first. For non-investors, there's a couple different scenarios I, I see is that you're an end user or you've inherited the property for some reason. Uh, if you're an end user, then you most likely want to get approved. 90 5% of the time, there's no reason why you should not get approved. You're going to be living there. The park wants to know who you are. They want some sort of understanding of you're not a murderer or a criminal, or you have to pass their background check, their credit check, their income check. Uh, so get approved unless the manager is telling you strategically, they're the ones telling you, hey, don't get approved. Uh, and that could be for a couple different reasons that you already know about. Potentially the lot rent will go up if you are the ones that are put on the lease. Maybe they say, hey, don't get approved, you know, just keep the older, the old people on the lease because lot rent will go up or uh, we're not going to approve your, your animal, but I like you and the, the, the owners are out of town, like the, the owners of the park are out of town. So the park managers, you know, giving you advice to say, don't get approved because maybe you're 55, but your girlfriend's 45 and she won't get approved. So let's just keep it the way it is. And you know, you can get approved later. That's a choice you can make, but most of the time you definitely want to get approved. If you're an end user, you're going to be living in the home. If you've inherited the home, you plan on reselling it, uh, explain the situation to the park manager. They'll usually understand you won't have to get approved most of the time. They'll understand you want to clean the home up and resell it. They may give you discounts as well on lot rent. You may have to pay up. You may have to sign some sort of storage agreement that you won't uh, live in the home, that you're going to clean it up, that you're going to resell it, and you're going to pay lot rent every month. But they typically won't need you to become approved. If they do and they ask that, then so be it. Um, so I hope that that made sense for the non-investors. Now for the investors, I'm going to start talking uh, in detail. Oops, in just a second. These very high-priced graphics behind me. Uh, I want to use the power of the internet right now to kind of source a poll to tell me which of these two shirts that you like better. They're not for the general public, and I'll kind of talk about them more. They're more of a reward, um, but I will. Uh, they're not for the general public. They're not. They're not for sale. But which of these two shirts that you can see right now look the best? Like you're instantly you see it and say, "Oh, that's pretty cool." or that is like the, the less dumb of the two shirts. If you could comment below either A or B, whichever shirt that you kind of like better, um, these are kind of the two final uh, uh, shirt designs for this one kind of project that I'm working on. So I thought I would ask people, for the three of you that want to comment, I would greatly appreciate it. Now using uh, the power of my lightsaber here, I want to show you this flow chart that I quickly created um, with regards to if you are an investor, Yes, uh, are you moving the home to a mobile home park? Now that's pretty obvious, but if you are moving the home to a park, yes, get approved for sure. If you're moving the home out of a mobile home park, then no, you're not gonna be living there. You don't have to be approved. I didn't put that in there. Like if you're moving the home out of a park, you don't have to be approved. Cause I thought that was sort of common sense that if you're not living there, you can, excuse me, buy the title and then you can take that title and take your home and you can move out. You don't need a lease. You can buy a home in a park and then move it uh, in many situations. But this is just saying if you're buying a home and moving it to a park, yeah, obviously you definitely wanna get approved. The manager wants you to become approved. Uh, so if it's already inside of a park, you're not moving it anywhere, it's already inside of a park, right here, what is your exit strategy? Uh, are you going to partner with the seller to some extent? Are you going to wholesale the home where you're not even going to buy it? You're just going to take a contract, find a buyer, and then make that uh, in-between money, that spread for yourself. Are you going to uh, fix the home and then flip it? Or are you going to fix the home and cash flow it for rent or for selling it on payments, if the park allows renting? Or are you selling it on payments? 
If you are not closing on the mobile home and taking title, you can go ahead and partner with the seller, or well, I'm sorry, you can partner with the seller, you can wholesale, but no, you don't have to become approved. You don't have to go into the park office to say, I'm gonna buy this home because you're not. Now, what you should say to the park manager, don't dodge the manager, let them know who you are, um, let's say that you're Bob. Well, I want people to know that Bob is has having something to do with this mobile home. So if your name is Bob, and that is uh, who I'm talking to right now, and you, you are looking to help a seller by wholesaling or partnering with them, you would want to go into the office to say, uh, uh, that you would want to mention to the park manager that you are a friend that will help Mrs. Jones sell her home. Because if Mrs. Jones is selling her home, let's say at lot number 50, well, if you're advertising that home, you're getting people through Mrs. Jones homes, you're helping open the home, you're helping show the home. People are going to go into that office and going to say, hey, I'm here for Bob's home, or I'm here, Bob showed me the home at number 50. And they're like, who is Bob? We don't know a Bob. So we want to make sure that they know who you are. And you can express to the manager that, hey, I went to go see such and such's property over at Mrs. Jones' property, a lot number 50. Sweet, sweet lady. And you can introduce yourself to the manager. Let them know who you are, what you do. Make sure you know what you're going to say and how to introduce yourself. But then you can clearly tell them, hey, listen, I'm not going to be buying it, but I'm, you know, she's so sweet. I want to help her. She's a sweet lady. Um, or I want to help them. You know, I'm going to you know, just open the door up every now and then or bring one or two people through. I said I would maybe have somebody that would be interested. And so you can just let them know that, you know, you're not buying it, but you want to be up front. And this is what, you know, they, you might be sending one or two people here. So you just wanted to introduce yourself. So you do want the managers to still sort of know about you even here. But then if you're going to fix the home, if you're going to sell it for payments, if you're going to sell it for cash, yes, ideally get approved. We are not looking to go under the radar. Sometimes we have, we don't have to, sometimes we have to, sometimes we do anyway, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. And if you don't think that you can get approved where they look at your background, your criminal, your credit, your income, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Some parks will want you to get approved just like everyone else. And some parks, because you're an investor, it'll be an amended uh, background check. Um, or no background check at all. But most of the time you should plan on that they will hit you with a normal background check. Again, only in the park where you're absolutely gonna close a deal, not just you're negotiating or you're thinking about making an offer. You know you're gonna buy that home. And so we ideally wanna get approved if we are fixing it and flipping it or fixing it and selling it for cash flow. We ideally wanna get approved. Once you're approved in a park, that approval usually lasts for six months or a year or longer. So if you're approved, you can buy another one without getting approved usually. If that one park owns a bunch of other sister parks, you are typically approved in those other communities as well, sometimes, or typically. Uh, be honest, be clear, be persistent. If the park manager won't allow you in the community and you know that they won't allow you because they've said they don't wanna work with investors to some extent, they've said they don't work with people under certain ages, they've said they don't uh, you know, take certain criminal backgrounds or they need certain incomes or credits, you know that you won't be approved or they, they've told you already that, that you kind of won't. There's a few different things that you can do here. You can have a straw person, which is just a, a real person that has nothing to do with the deal. They just put up their credit uh, and their age on the line. This is a partner of yours. It's a, a parent or a partner or a business partner, but it's just someone that's not a big deal. And the park won't mind. As long as someone's on the hook from you know your organization that's going to be you're buying the home, cleaning it, and reselling it, and keeping it there. Yeah, that straw person, usually a park doesn't have a problem with that. They might want to do a background check on everyone that's going to live there, but you're not going to live there. They just need one person in your organization, and it doesn't have to be you. Or they want you to sign a storage agreement to say, well, don't live here, but you know, you, you can do the repairs and, and fix up the home if you want. They might ask you to pay a higher deposit, which I didn't spell this right, um, you know, pay two or three times the deposit, or you can even mention that. And something that I think might be cut off uh, at the end of this video is a co-signer. Uh, you can have a co-signer as well, or you can go under the radar, something that we don't want to do, but sometimes we're forced on doing. If a park doesn't want you in the community, realize that again, they're just saying that you can't sign the lease. They're not going to make it easy for you to kind of own this home because um, the park doesn't want you there, like I said. So if we go under the radar and if the park doesn't want you there, there's still some things we can do. We can still purchase the title as long as it's not owned by the park, it's owned by the person. We can take the title 
And now we have the home and the title. We can, we can keep the title open where we don't actually transfer it into our names. We can transfer it to the next person. The state will definitely frown upon that typically. Uh, we typically want to go from one party to the next to the next. Uh, or you can take that title and you can sell it to someone that wants to move the home out of the park. Again, that's going to burn bridges. That's not a good idea if you plan on being in this business long term. And this advice I'm giving you is for people that want to be in this business long term. If you're in an RV traveling around the country mobile home investing in different areas and you don't mind burning bridges well then you can don't have to worry about a lot of the sort of you know ethical stuff maybe that, that comes with building a long-term business and treating parks right and doing the right thing but we typically don't want to move the home out of the park we typically if you can see this last one sell to the mobile home oh, that doesn't help sell to the mobile home park itself we can buy the mobile home and then sell it to the community and that's not a typically a good idea because if we're selling it to the park, it typically means that we're threatening to move the home out of the community or they don't want us there in the first place and they're trying to buy us out. But I do have a video, I'll link it to below in this, uh, below in the description of an interview with George as an active mobile home investor in the New Jersey area. And he is going under the radar um, in a couple different parks. You can sell them for cash, you can sell them in payments. Uh, and we can still go under the radar. We don't want to do that again because we want these long-term businesses and to be upfront and above board and talking with the manager and to be an asset and a help in the community. But sometimes that doesn't always happen. So I hope that this all made sense, uh, what you can see. And if you have any questions, you're going through a specific situation, like I mentioned earlier on in the video, uh, please don't ever hesitate to reach out support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. That's support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Again, my name is John. I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much.